I'm really <coughs> delighted to be able to be here and to be part of this event this evening. Um, and I decided to, to title my talk, um, Inter Everything Challenges, because I think that we need to think even beyond interdisciplinarity. Uh, and think about intersectoral challenges as well as interscale challenges. So you'll see that come up as themes um, in the research projects that I'm going to present uh, very briefly to you in the next 20 minutes. Um, and I'd just like to uh, say thank you very much to Terry um, and his, all of his researchers at Sustainable Place says, uh, for leading the charge internationally and for really making such a huge contribution to this conversation. So. This is a, a slide that was, it's actually a photo from um, a research project that we have going on in the Northwest Territories in Canada. And I wanted to share this with you as the opening slide for my talk, because I think that part of the challenge of thinking about sustainability in place is constant change. I think that's one of the biggest challenges that we face in a place-based context, including in the physical world. And this photograph was taken um, in uh, 1990 by a First Nations gentleman by the name of Lloyd Chicot, And this land is now underwater. And one of the, the uh, they've moved their camp. This is actually a summer and winter, was a summer and winter uh, hunting camp. It no longer is because it's underwater. Uh, but they've had to move their camp back five times uh, in his lifetime. So just to, to um, make the point that we're dealing with when we talk about sustainable places and sustainability in places together, we're talking about a very dynamic environment. And that's one of the challenges that we're facing. The next thing that I'd like to share with you is this diagram of a sustainable food system. This is the area that I work in. And the point of sharing this diagram is just to demonstrate how incredibly complex a sustainable food system is when you try to diagram it out. There are, and this doesn't even capture everything, um, but what it would capture if you could see the detail is the fact that essentially, um, if we use the lens of food, for example, as a way into this conversation about sustainability, um, Food can be seen and sustainability can be seen as a lever as well as a challenge for addressing many of the, uh, of the, the things that we're facing right now, including uh, issues around climate change, issues around access to healthy food, um, and also uh, how our ecological footprint, the extent of it, or, uh, of it or not, and also very concrete things like waste and transportation and ecological biodiversity, just as some examples that we can point to. So when we think about um, this complexity and challenges, those are some of the things that I'll be pointing to in the rest of my presentation. And it's also important to think about how this, these many pressures pull the food system in different directions. And it's difficult and complex for everybody. So uh, we're all trying to figure out what to do. Um, and in order to address these, uh, these challenges and find solutions, we need to re really be thinking in a complex, place-based, inter-everything, um, with inter-everything approaches in order to improve uh, sustainability. So what I'm going to do now is draw on my personal experience and research that I've been involved in over the last uh, number of years. And the first project that I'm going to share with you is called Project FLEDGE. Um, FLEDGE stands for Food Locally Embedded, Globally Engaged. And that acronym was actually coined by a colleague of Terry's here, uh, Kevin Morgan. Uh, I borrowed that from him, so uh, I'm grateful to him for that and other things. Um, and it's a federally funded partnership in Canada. Um, our goal is to foster uh, place-based food systems that are healthy and fair, that support local economies and regenerate the environment. So we're looking aspirationally at all the different dimensions of sustainability at once. Um, we have seven research nodes across Canada, uh, and we have three themes that we're trying to address. The first is integrating across scale and, uh, sorry, across sectors and disciplines. We're also looking at whether um, or not scaling up and out makes any sense. And uh, in the third instance, we're looking at uh, innovative governance and examples of that. So the cross-cutting challenges when we try to put those three themes together um, are multiple. But the ones that I want to highlight for you this evening are, first of all, making sure that the right people are sitting at the table. 
And that's a really complicated thing to do, and you need to work with communities for a long time before you actually know whether you're getting at that or not. So that's one challenge. Another challenge is once you have all the people sitting at the table to make sure that all the voices are being heard because oftentimes there are a few squeaky wheels sitting around the table and they tend to they can dominate the conversation. So those are a couple of challenges that we've identified through this work that I'm sure everybody here um, can uh, that I'm sure that resonates for many people as well. So in terms of Project Fledge, just to give you a sense of the extent of what we're doing, um, up in the Northwest Territories, we're looking at the intersection of climate change, food security, and resilience. In terms of uh, closer to home in Ontario, where uh, I work near Toronto, we're interested in things like non-wage labor and the intersection uh, of that with ecologically oriented farms. So this idea of internships and people working in a sustainable environment, supposedly, and how not getting paid sort of is part of that conversation. Um, we're also interested in things like technology and how technology can be used as a way to address some of the pressing concerns that our farmers are facing and how we can use that to connect people uh, within communities to the farmers. So this is an example that we have. Um, we have what's called Open Food Network Canada. It's the Canadian version of Open Food Network, which is an international um, open access global platform that allows us to address this challenge of connecting rural communities and farmers with more urban uh, centers. Another challenge that we're dealing with specifically within food is this idea of rebuilding the miss missing middle. And I think that this is important because it speaks to this idea of capacity within communities that's being undermined in many different places where we find that we don't have the infrastructure anymore to have sustainable communities because it's, it's disappeared because of various global trade pressures and, and things like that. Um, and the last example that I'd like to draw from uh, that's directly related to Fledge is this idea of agroecology. We have uh, an international working group that's focused on agroecology and we've been doing a lot of work over the last few years trying to build knowledge sharing capacity really be between the communities who um, we work with. So uh, we'll be holding our second um, knowledge sharing workshop. It's sort of like a field school in August around this idea of agroecology and the idea is to bring together people from the global south to help inform people in the global north about how to engage in agroecology and what that means and what the potential is. So it's sort of this idea of flipping uh, ideas around uh, where the global south is providing us in the global north with some ideas. So that's one way of dealing with challenges is this knowledge exchange and building networks. The second project that I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is the city region food systems. This is a project that we've been involved with um, in the last three years now uh, with the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and also with the RUEF Foundation. Um, this, is a, this is a map uh, uh, an imagined map of what a city region food system would look like. And I'm just going to uh, point out a couple of things. Uh, the idea here is that it's important to build urban rural linkages and to think about food uh, in a way that allows us to focus on the whole within a region as opposed to the global food system. And it's sort of a refocusing uh, lens that uh, helps us to do things um, through this approach where there's a, a, a people-centered a, a focus, which um, is important in terms of the right to food. So that's one of the, um, the foci through this research. There's also um, an interest in multi-level governance that I'm gonna speak about uh, in, in a couple of minutes. This idea that you can take this approach and use it for territorial planning so it's actually a practical tool for moving forward. And it's also a way to talk about resilient ecosystem and disaster management um, for the future. So clearly, uh, when you're trying to operationalize this kind of research, the challenges that are faced are how do you cross scales and how do you develop um, rele relevant policy approaches that allow these different partners to, to speak to each other? And I'm going to share with you some of the results in a minute. 
But the first thing that I want to do is just walk you through the methodology really quickly. This is a very, very simplified version of how we um, went out into the field and operationalized this idea. Um, so the first thing that we did was we would go into different communities and there were seven cities involved in this project. So there was um, two cities in Zambia, Kitwe and Lusaka. We were working as well in um, Utrecht in the Netherlands and Toronto in Canada. We also worked in Quito um, and Medellin. Um, and we had another project in Colombo and Sri Lanka. So as you can uh, imagine, there are many variations when you're trying to bring some kind of common denominator to that extent of, uh, and range of projects. So the first thing that we did was establish, uh, we encouraged the communities to establish what their city region food system looked like. So what kind of a city region food system were we, were we dealing with, first of all? How, how was it bounded? And then within that, we asked people to assess the food flows and how the food was moving within each city region food system. And then on that basis, because of that uh, analysis, and by virtue of bringing together many different participants from across the region, so that was part of the first step, was to convene a task force that would allow us to figure out what the food system looked like and conduct this assessment. But what it also did was it facilitated conversations across these scales. So as a result of that, we had the people sitting around the table who were able to engage in policy support and participatory planning. Um, and then also because those people were sitting at the table, there was this constant knowledge sharing, dissemination, and training that was happening as the different projects unfolded. We don't have tons of time, so I'm just going to get into two examples here. The first is uh, Medellin. Um, and the emphasis here was on uh, territorial governance. Um, and what we were able to realize in Medellin was that they had already, before we got there, done an extensive food flow analysis. So we had some really good data to work with um, to understand what their food system looked like. However, what they didn't have was a lot of connections within their, uh, within their regional food system. What we also realized was that there were opportunities for creating direct links between low-income consumers to existing small-scale projects and that would give them access to better quality food. So for example, um, through urban markets, through community gardens and popular canteens, uh, we were able to facilitate um, by identifying where the gaps were uh, from the food assessment, we were able to facilitate some of these connections. Another uh, result of this work was the identification or the, the creation of a regional partnership called Aliancia Por el Buen Vivir, and that was actually convened through the mayor's office and also involves regional um, planning and regional authorities. So what that means is um, there is now this capacity that has been created as part of this project so that moving forward there's a bigger conversation around food and food is seen as a solution for some sustainability challenges. And some of the future work that's being considered are ways to improve these rural um, and urban linkages. So the next project that I'd like to talk about is uh, the city of Colombo and its city region food system. Um, through the analysis, the food flow analysis that was undertaken, um, it became obvious that there were three key problems that the city wanted to identify or the city region wanted to identify. So that's one of the things that came out of these assessment processes is first of all, people got educated as a group about what the challenges were. And then they were able to collectively identify and prioritize what they wanted to address. So in the case of Colombo, although there's quite low poverty levels in the city, um, a third of the people in the city are food insecure. So food access is a really important challenge for Colombo. Um, food safety is also on the radar screen, was identified as something that needed to be addressed. And food waste is also a huge problem. So this, I don't know if you can see this or not, because the light, it's uh, not a big, very big photograph. But there was actually in April of 2017, in one of their garbage dumps, um, there was a collapse. And these houses are, were on the edge of the garbage dump, and there was a fire. 23 people died as a result of this collapse. So dealing with waste is a really, really pressing issue. Um, and several of the people who died were children. Um, so there's, there's a need to, to think about this in a very sort of um, expeditious way. 
So um, what we identified was the, the, the thing, or what the researchers in the, that community identified was that there were opportunities for um, creating a more robust network of policymakers and institutions, again, the same as in Medellin, that by understanding food as a lever could address some very important issues. Uh, and this translated actually into bylaws, which is really, it's actually kind of impressive that they were able to move this through the system so quickly. Because within two years of getting this project started, they actually had, um, they were developing bylaws that were going to address food waste and also food loss. So that's sort of the food uh, security issues and also issues around food safety. So within a very short amount of time, um, given the activated um, task force that was convened to address these issues, they really actualized uh, results very quickly. Um, and they, what has also happened is in the meantime, while this project has been going on, there's been a move to create a mega um, urban structure, a megapolis. And because food was on the radar screen of policymakers while this megapolis was being um, developed, food is now on the megapolis agenda, hopefully. It looks like that's uh, another good contribution from this work. So um, just to summarize really quickly, um, the city region food systems approach enables integration, knowledge mobilization, multi-stakeholder engagement. Um, it obviously builds capacity and also cross-governmental links. And I don't know if this is going to work or not. But it also provides policy tools. So we have um, a toolkit that's in a beta version. So it doesn't have all of the support that it will in the next few weeks. But what this does is it allows people who weren't in the pilot project, so outside that seven city project, to enact and take on this city region food systems approach if they want. So this is basically a how to conduct your own city region food system um, project. So it, it introduces a toolkit, it tells people how to get prepared and, and convene meetings, it talks about how do you define a city region food system, establish a vision, um, how do you do your city region food system scan, so what can those um, what can those food flow analyses look like? And then it goes on to talk about supporting uh, policy and uh, also governance issues. So if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Um, there's another project that I'm not going to get into now because I'm running out of time. But what I wanted to point to finally, and this is, um, I'm sure many people in the room are familiar with the Sustainable Development Goals and all the initiatives related to that. But one of the things that's interesting is when we start to put on this sustainability lens, uh, and in this case I've used food as an example, this is from a paper that's about to come out in the Journal of Sustainability, what we find is we can start to articulate many different benefits around this lens of food. And I mean, we could put water there, or we could put health, but I do food because that's what I do, right? <laughs> it's a little bit self-serving. but. By putting food and nutrition security and improved livelihoods at the center of this diagram, we can actually deal with economic issues, local economic development issues. We can talk about climate change. Uh, we can talk about improved urban rural linkages, healthier food systems, so giving people better access to food. Um, in the Quito uh, project, one of the major findings was gender, so women in urban food systems and how their livelihoods can be improved. So, um, and water quality, for example. So if we have better managed food systems, that can have spin-off benefits for improved water systems. So I think that's it. Um, yeah, thank you.